Welcome back. This is Gregory Higgins, and you are turned on and into the 11th episode of Fact Day TV News, the only place where you can find the real fake news that matters. And with us today are our anchormen. Mike Siri back again with stories on the current state of the nation, new cabinet selection process, and how the state makes pot quality a joint effort. Jeff Semprebon with stories on how students can be saved from school shootings, sheep human cloning, and an uncovered assassination plot. And tonight we're going to tell you the truth that you don't want to hear, and the truth of the matter is we don't really know if the re news really matters anymore. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the truth, which is something we very rarely hear these days. The truth about what? The truth that we may have a conspirator in our midst. Midsts? Midsts? Yes, midsts. Yes, what is it that you're talking about? Oh, now you want to speak up. Well, yeah, why shouldn't I? Yes, well, you can if you really want to. Well, why shouldn't I? Where have you been and why have you been talking to the Russians about world domination? What? What are you talking about? I was away because I had a problem with my family. Oh, so now you deny that you've been talking to the Russians about taking over the world. Taking over the world? I can't even take over my own house. Why would I be talking to Russians about taking over the world? So there you go. You just admitted to talking to the Russians about taking over the world. What are you talking about? I was talking about my own house. Oh, so you invited the Russians to your house to talk about world domination. No, no, I haven't. I did not, nor have I ever been talking to Russians about taking over the world. See, there you go again. You just mentioned it again. You just mentioned that you're going, working on taking over the world with the Russians. What? H huh? You can't get out of this one that easy. Get out of what one? I was never in one to begin with. Now, don't deny it. Where were you on the night of February 14th? I was home with my wife. It was Valentine's Day. Oh, I see. And don't you know that St. Valentine was executed? What? Uh, who? Where Were you involved in the Russian execution? No, no, I was home with my wife. We were together. Oh, so your wife's together on this with you. Look, we can go on with this all night if we have to. Look, I have not, nor have I ever, been involved with any form of Russian involvement for world domination. See? See, there he goes again, talking about the Russians and world domination. Where did you get that from? You, I got it from you, Mr. Mike Siri. Do you know that you mentioned Russians and world domination four times since we started talking? Yeah, well, I was just repeating what you were saying. Yeah, well, you're just repeating what I was saying. Yes, you kept mentioning Russians and world domination. Yeah, yeah, well, there you go again. You you, you, you can't stop talking about it, can you? Was just se sessions involved with your plan? No, no, it was Valentine's Day. My wife and I had no interest in getting Jeff Sessions involved. Oh, okay. So there you see, you just said, said Jeff Sessions was not involved. Didn't he say Jeff what Sessions was involved, Jeff? Uh, me? What? I don't. Why are you getting me involved in this discussion of Russians taking over the world? Oh, so you, you're in on this too. Uh, I, I would have expected this from, from Mike, but you, Jeff? No, not you. Uh, look, Greg, could we just get started with the news? Oh, so you just want to avoid the obvious and let our country become overcome by Russian collusion? Yeah. Well, I guess so if it'll keep you from mentioning this nonsense about Russians and world domination. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mike, lead us off with his first story. Take it away, Mike. Thank you, Greg. And for my first story, I'm happy to report that it may be a surprise to many Fact 8 TV viewers that in a recent scientific study, it has been discovered that in many people, their brains do not actually work until after they are dead, which would make a lot of sense since many of the people I talk to these days seem like they're not there at all or out in space somewhere. It is possible that they've been taking advantage of the new marijuana laws or perhaps that once they're dead they are no longer 
distracted by staring obsessively into the little screen of some mobile device. Hey, what was that? Where'd you get that from? Are you trying to insinuate something? No, Gregory, I was just reporting the news as it's been related to me. Yeah, oh well, okay, I'll let it slide this time. That's right, just let it slip. I said slide. Right, the slide. All right, slide, and I'm going to slide over to Jeff with our next story, and hopefully he's going to be more informative than the last one. Okay, Jeff, I'm turning it over to you. Okay, running for a seat in the legislature in Vermont is going to be different. Vermont voters, disgusted with the current immature and irresponsible actions of legislators currently holding office, as well as frequent scandals involving sexual harassment and corruption, have been asking for a better system for the state's political parties to select candidates. We have learned that a new system will be put into place, and it's a unique system. Upcoming framework for qualification appears to have resulted from a misunderstanding in the language of the citizen's petition, calling for a better way to select candidates running for a House seat. Commission, appointed by Governor Scott to draft recommendations, appears to have taken a very literal interpretation of the petition warning and has asked parties to implement a road race on the highways surrounding Montpelier. In this race, hopeful candidates will literally run in pursuit of a flatbed truck loaded with seats temporarily removed from the State House for this event. Candidates will literally need to run for a state a seat and be the first to grab it off the back of the truck if they expect to get their party's nomination. Commission noted that a benefit of this approach is that it should reduce the chances of legislators staying in office well past their productive years without having to impose term limits. Wow. Back to you, Greg. Thank you, Jeff. That's very interesting about the disgusted, immature, well, sexual yeah. harassers running for seats. I think, it's, I think it's very good. Well, when you say running for seats, you're not talking about pinching seats, right? No. Okay. No, these are actual like physical okay. seats on a flatbed okay. on the back of a truck. Yeah. Chair would be yeah. easier. If you Understood. Way. For an, our, our next story. Track mind. When you're living a life of crime, crime is your way of life, and that's all you know. But for many criminals. There comes a day when you need to just stop and look at yourself in the mirror and say, this is not right. I can't do this anymore. The simple fact is that for many criminals, crime simply does, doesn't pay enough to keep up with their increasing in the cost of living. Economists who study the issue point out that criminal incomes have remained stagnant for years while the cost of living has steadily increased. At the point, criminals either need to straighten up and get a legal job or, re or refrain or retrain for a criminal career offering a greater income. Then there are those more successful criminals who don't believe that what they're doing is wrong because it's making them rich and popular with their rich criminal crowd. These criminals get to smile and laugh with each other and call each other friend, even if it is fact that they would stab each other in the back first chance they get. After all, isn't the friends that trust, that trust you the most that you can steal from the most? <laughs> While these more successful criminals cause economic harm, they tend to be less violent and cause fewer complaints from the public. In fact, many are indistinguishable from typical business owners or politicians. So in an effort to reduce the public perception of crime, the Vermont State Department of Correction plans to try a new mentoring program which mat matches up successful criminals with petty crooks, looking to retrain so they can be more successful and be less obvious to the public. Interesting. That yeah, always yeah. helps a lot. And my impressions are important. You're going to talk about the state of the nation. Yes, I am, Greg. The new state of the state address is that it has no address or persons that could properly address the address. What that means is that we need a leader who is capable of openly and honestly addressing the statement as to the actual state that our country is in without camouflaging the reality of the chicanery that is actually going on today in the White House. Therefore, we have been actually forced to go out of state and ask other countries as to address the issue of the actual state that our state is in. 
What kind of state is that to be in? It just so happens that citizens from many countries around the world are stunned and shocked at the state of the new ununited states. However, many oligarch wannabes are actually impressed at the current changes in the ununited states and are anxiously awaiting their chance to follow the example in their own countries to get in on the greed and make themselves wealthy. Wow. We've got to take this out. Very state. well wow. stated, I think. A Boy, that's a tongue twister, man, I'll tell you. you can make but more very money, true. More money selling marijuana these days. Mm. That would be Without a different a doubt. state. Without a doubt. And Jeff, you got a next, next story for us. Fact Date TV News has just received a shocking report from a confidential source claiming to be inside the United States Secret Service. Our informant has provided what are claimed to be details of an assassination plot targeting President Trump. The report includes several emails intercepted by the Secret Service describing a diabolical scheme developed after Trump's recent announcement that, had he been at the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School during the mass shooting, he would have entered to confront the shooter even if unarmed himself. Based on this information, the deep state plotters developed a plan to make use of their well-known experience employing crisis actors to stage fake school shootings. In this case, the conspirators planned to stage a fake school shooting nearby some location Trump was visiting in order to lure the hapless hero into an insidious ambush when he bravely rushed in to save the students from their attacker. All real Americans can be thankful that the Secret Service uncovered this foul conspiracy and has taken steps to prevent it from ever being achieved. Since Trump's selfless dedication to the public well-being and heroic impulses are believed to be too strong to control, the Secret Service has persuaded his doctors to inform him that a resurgence of his bone spur condition makes it unsafe for him to run, and that doing so might risk injuries so severe as to deprive the public of his great leadership. That's something we wouldn't want to do. Where would we be without, without the president? That's I don't right. Know. Good thing it was caught in time. And now for our next story. The immigrant situation that a large number of white citizens keep complaining about is no longer a difficult situation. Residents of overwhelmingly white areas of the country blame immigrants not only for non-existent increase of crime, but also as the reason for their discontent and lack of jobs. However, a recent government study has found that the real reason for their discontent is due to their own lack of ambition and not knowing how to live within their means. The fact is that immigrants are far more adept at learning how to live with what little they've got because they become accustomed to living with what little they have. Living the American dream may all be just an illusion few are capable of obtaining, and the inability of many native-born Americans to obtain it becomes too much for them to handle, and they have to blame someone, and the easiest target are the immigrants. To help alleviate this problem, the government plans to soon implement an immigrant exchange program where, whereby the United States could exchange one of our drug addicts, alcoholics, or sex offenders for every one of their productive citizens. It appears to be a quick and easy way to clean up the country. We can export all of our losers after they fail at their third chance of rehab and send them to Syria or Africa or any of them on uh, dung hole unproductive countries and we, we could think of. Thus immediately cleaning up and eliminating our opioid ep epidemic, drunks that can't stop drunk driving, and sexual predators, whether they be politicians or not. I can see making a priority for the politicians, though. They can run one of those black hole countries. Oh, that they could be. Do that someplace else. And Jeff, you got our next story, Jeff. As our viewers are well aware, the country is bitterly divided in a debate on what actions should be taken to reduce school shootings. Those with little knowledge of firearms are calling on ba for bans on black scary rifles, while those who cling bitterly to their guns and religion are insisting that every teacher, principal, janitor, and lunch lady should be issued a gun and provided tactical training. While this intractable debate rages, one Vermont company has proposed a technological solution that should be readily acceptable to both sides. K 
Kinetic Facilities Corporation of Essex Junction has adopted the premise of shifting staircases and hallways popularized in the series of Harry Potter books and motion pictures. However, unlike the random shifting at Hogwarts, as described by author J.K. Rowling, Kinetic Facilities will be offering hallways and stairwells that can be controlled by the school administration from a centralized location. As an aspiring school shooter enters the school, the staff will be able to shift the hallways to divert the attacker away from classrooms and concentrations of students, and instead lead them to unused areas such as storage rooms, maintenance closets, libraries, and other areas seldom used by students. In schools which allow staff to be armed, the hallways can direct the attacker into a teacher's lounge, where the staff, warned ahead of time, can take up positions behind reinforced cover to confront the attacker. Critics of the system point to its high cost, but Kinetic Facilities believes the cost can be readily covered by a combination of reduced teacher salaries and a local tax on school supplies. Mm. That's a good idea. Thanks, Jeff. And while you were talking, I just thought of a great idea. Oh, really? Yeah. They don't have to eliminate the assault, uh, assault rifles at all. Just make them so they only shoot like little foam balls instead of bullets. Ooh, not and a then, bad idea. And let people keep their assault rifles. Yeah? That's right. That's right. And Mike, you got a next story. Yes, I do, Greg. Another technological approach to dealing with school shooters has been announced by Calamity Communications of Brattleboro. For some time now, they have offered schools their lockdown alert application for either iPhones or Android devices. This application ties into the school's PA system to provide a lockdown message on the students' devices and was developed in response to research showing that students pay far more attention to notifications on their mobile devices than they do to the school's PA announcements or even to that loudmouth person at the front of the classroom who keeps talking and interrupting their texting and Snapchat. Now, Calamity Communications has announced an expanded Lockdown Plus application for those schools with a security camera system. With the new application, once a lockdown is announced, the feed from the security cameras is provided on the application, providing each student with a video feed so that they can track the progress of an attack and plan their escape accordingly. Wow. Interesting use of technology. Yeah, it would help everybody get out of those fire... And see, what I would suggest yeah. then also, you know, on the door of most of the classrooms, math classrooms at least, they have pouches for calculators. I think they should have pouches for, let's say, Glocks. And then as students are making their escape, and only at those times, they can grab a Glock and, and get out. And get out and start shooting. Wow. Interesting idea. A very interesting idea. Starting immediately, all town boards in Vermont will be held fully responsible for the testing of homegrown marijuana produced within their jurisdiction to assure that it meets the high standards of quality that consumers have come to expect from agricultural products that bear the Made in Vermont label. There will be, will be homegrown local joints being smoked in all Vermont town hall venues. They will be testing for aroma, aftertaste, potency, space out factor, effectiveness of the high, and munchiness factor. The town board members will be expected to supply their very own home-baked cakes, cookies, or pies, just in case they're affected with the munchy syndrome. All town board meetings will be televised live through local TV stations, so those who are not familiar with the marijuana high will then have more knowledgeable ability to make a decision whether or not it is something they would want to try for themselves. It will also supply the ability to recognize when another person is under the influence of marijuana high. It is also expected to provide some entertaining moments for the enjoyment of residents as they watch their local leaders debate contention issues while under the influence. That is some good news. Mm, I, I can see, news. like, YouTube channel of, you know, Bellows Falls Select Board's greatest hits. That would work, yes. Mm. That would work. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, Mike, you're Mike. That, that is Jeff. correct. Yes. Okay, you, you've got another story. 
This country has sure gone gun crazy. And now it's time to buy more guns because everybody's going to need a gun. Politicians are now trying to put in place new laws that will entitle everyone to carry a gun, not just teachers, but anyone that wants a gun. That's right. Once you become old enough to walk and talk, read and write, you can carry a gun. If arming teachers is a good deterrent to school shootings, arming the students, too, will be even better. As a matter of fact, politicians are looking to put in place laws that will make it mandatory for all people to carry guns when in public outside their homes. Following NRA Executive Vice President Wayne LaPierre's advice that the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. Leading politicians have come to con the conclusion that the only way that we can keep ourselves safe from gun violence is that we all carry guns. The idea is that the large majority of ununited state citizens are peace-loving, kind individuals, and that if everyone has a gun, the bad guys will be so scared that they'll never try to commit any heinous crimes, thus in turn making the whole country a far more safe place to live. Now, I know a lot of our viewers don't really like the NRA and the money it gets from increasing gun sales and may not like the sound of these new laws, but consider this. Once everyone in our society has a gun, there won't be any need for more gun sales. We'll plummet and the NRE's funding will dry up, leaving them powerless. <laughs> mm. It's nice to have a country full of kind, peace-loving, gun-carrying citizens. That's right. So, you An know, armed society is a polite society. That's <laughs> right. Robert Heinlein. It's like... I hate to be rude to somebody that's going to shoot you. That yeah, that's really true, well. true. Uh, Jeff, Jeff's got a new story about some uh, cloning, I see. Yes, activists concerned about the implications and ethical considerations regarding human cloning were horrified to hear recently that scientists in California had been able to create a sheep-human hybrid, sheep embryos containing human stem cells, Calls to ban any cloning involving human and animal hybrids has flooded the offices of politicians. But so far, there's been little response. Today, leaders of both the Republican and Democratic parties each released separate memos on the subject. And surprisingly, despite no signs of cooperation or collusion with each other or with the Russian government, both memos contain much the same message, assuring party members that the research is beneficial and that creating a population of sheep-human hybrids may be the best opportunity for the party to counteract falling enthusiasm among voters and increasing voter participation. Each party statement expresses hope that the new sheep-human hybrids, once their right to vote has been recognized, will be more enthusiastic about embracing the party's platform and will be far less subject to the voter fatigue and discouragement currently experienced by fully human voters when they see their party's candidates fail to adhere to their promises once elected. By I'm speechless. Die Xavier. <laughs> Cheap humans. <laughs> that would the perfect voters. They would be running. That's right. I wonder what kind of clothes they would wear. Wool. Wool. <laughs> you might guess. They can shave themselves and then weave the stuff in the uh, clothing. That's, that would be interesting to see. Uh, for our next story, we have recently received the results of a Fact 8 TV news survey on three greatest character attribu attributes of today for effective political leaders. From the responses we have received, our viewers now overwhelmingly rate three most valuable character attributes for public leaders as being ignorance, fantasticism, and tyranny. Viewers co commented that these qualities allow leaders the ability they need to accomplish effective change in the face of dissenting opinions and dismissing inconvenient facts that might otherwise undermine desired policy initiatives. These qualities were highly correlated with positive outcomes for the country such as winning and greatness. So those of you who want to be leaders rather than losers should take note of these results and incorporate these attributes into your own personal life. Get there 
Get out there, be fruitful, and multiply those most important dollar dollar bills, y'all. That's what it all comes <laughs> down to. And there we go, Mike. Every year, Vermont ranks as one of the worst pest-infested states, leaving residents to suffer through nasty pest problems inside their homes. Finally responding to years of pleas by upset citizens, the state of Vermont has launched a new program aimed to make every home pest-free by the end of 2018. The new system is by turning the pests into pets and ending the pest situation immediately and permanently. There are numerous local citizens that are ready to go into production, manufacturing, and selling roach houses and sponsor town hall roach races. Plans were also revealed for an open ant farm, allowing Vermont children to watch and appreciate these industrious insects as they scurry about the kitchen, stealing sugar and other foods. And larger pests, such as mice, are not to be forgotten. With tiny collars, beds, and food and water dishes, these cute furry little friends that have been making themselves at home in your home can now be welcomed as friends and family. Mice will no longer have to sneak into your pantry to nibble and poop on your edibles. They can now be loved, cared for, and fed like they're a member of the family. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh. No, oh, there goes one of your family. <laughs> well, I think that was Billy. <laughs> Sorry. I can see that that plan would result in a lot of excess S's. I wonder if they have something it's to do S's. with them. It's if true. you turn all the pests into pets, what do you do with all the extra S's? I don't know. Ooh, anyway. Very true. Well, that's it for our show. This is Gregory Higgins, and I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch our news tonight. So you guys at home, ladies and children of all ages, sizes, colors, and ethnicities. When the news is too good to wait for the facts, Fact Day TV News brings you the news as we see fit. May you all enjoy a good, clean life, and remember to be honest to the spirit that lives within you. Have a great day and a good night till next time. Mike, could you say good night? Good night, everybody. And Jeff, could you say good night to our viewers? Good night, viewers everywhere. And that's it. Do, 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 do.